Are you ready to create something amazing? Welcome to Sneller Creative Promotions. Custom promotional packaging and unique marketing materials. Making your business memorable. This is Sneller Creative Promotions, the podcast. Welcome to Create Something Amazing. I'm Brendan Shanahan alongside Jess Snell of Sneller Creative Promotions. Jeff, how are you hanging in there? Two kids home from college uh, doing their best to remain sane and eighth grader as well. So changing times for everybody for sure. Sure. And that, that brings uh, brings us to the point of with with what you do, how are you dealing with the the stay-at-home order and the quarantine like with, with companies all over the place, you know, working from home now. Right. Yeah. I mean, so we talk about changing time. So every every business model, every business, uh, and I'm sure you see it in yours too, has changed. How do we adapt uh, and remain busy and remain productive and stay in front of our customers? And it's this challenge is the same for everybody. So in my world of putting logos on things, custom promotional packaging and logo products, there are all kinds of ways that we can uh, help our customers, which we most of our business is B2B, business to business help our customers remain in front of two audiences, I guess, really their employees, keeping their employees who are all at home productive and happy and somewhat satisfied and content. So there's a way that we can help them reach out to their own uh, employee base. And then as well as helping other businesses reach their target customers who are not at work anymore, they're at home too. So I guess to answer your question, it's finding uh, techniques and methods and products and things to get into people's homes. Uh, that typically are logoed with uh, messaging that that helps uh, accomplish objectives that our customers are looking to achieve. And, and when you're you're doing that, like what you would refer to in the past as clunky mail, now is probably a good time for companies to do something like that because people are home and they're they're attentive. So now when they get something in the mail, uh, obviously after they wipe it down, they bring it in and they're like, "Wow, this is some pretty cool stuff." And you know, ever everybody loves a little gift in the time of quarantine. Yeah, that's right. I, I love the way you said that. And uh, yeah, the clunky mail is a is a a fun way to think about that. When something comes to your house, whether you're expecting to receive it or not, it's exciting. There's a certain amount of anticipation of opening, even even junk mail now. You get so little of it anymore that it's exciting to open the Val Pack coupons. But if you get a box, you know, and you don't know what's in there, it, it is always well received. So whether it comes from your employer and it's a, a work from home kit that may contain Logo goodies to help reinforce the company message, whether it's comfortable clothing or hand sanitizer or a face mask or bandanas, uh, or yoga mats. I mean, we've done all kinds of kits in the last couple of months to help keep employees motivated and just let them know that their employer's thinking about them. Then extend that to, you know, your prospecting for your customer base. You're doing the same thing that you might ordinarily do, but it's going to be received uh, much, much better received now when people are looking for even even a five minute diversion from the monotony of working from home is is going to get you a much better bang for your buck than normal. Right. I, I heard you mention masks like mask. That's that's a great one right now. You get companies uh, print up a bunch of masks and everybody's everybody needs a mask right now. Send it out with their logo on it. Who knows? That's right. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got some with my logo that I created. I mean, I started off with just the, the medical, the blue kind of ugly medical masks. And then a customer of mine asked me if I could do these big bandanas with his logo on there, which I did. And they turned out really cool. But then I sort of thought, you know, the... Not everybody wants to wear a big clunky bandana. So these face masks, uh, again, I've made them with my logo and with his logo. And it is, I don't want to say it's fun because no one wants to be stuck wearing a face mask, but it is interesting to see how people turn these into a bit of a fashion statement. So, you know, I'm a geek about my logo anyway. So if I have to, I'm already wearing my custom hats and t-shirts and jackets and everything else has my logo. So why wouldn't my face mask have it? Absolutely. I mean, it sounds, it sounds bad, but I'll tell you what, you know, if my wife's company decided to do something and send something to out to all their employees, why not send them face masks right now? I mean, people would appreciate it. You know, like when I go out right now, I have like this, napkin with a like piece of uh foam type filter that that we put inside it and it goes and i tie it back behind my head you know oh it's God. yeah it's it's not you know i i mean 
I feel pretty safe with it, but it's not the greatest. You know, I don't actually have a mask. So if, you know, if I was working for a company that decided to do something for their employees, man, you send them out a little pack of uh, hand sanitizer and face masks. I'll tell you what, those things sound silly, but at a time like this, I'm sure they're appreciated. Yeah. Well, and right now, I mean, not only so when there isn't a pandemic going on, people still like getting a gift in the mail, but something that literally could help save your life or at least protect you from sickness. Yeah, you're right about that. So it actually, uh, you're getting kind of, I don't want to say excited, but kind of jazzed up about this. Like I said, it sounds strange, but we live in a different world right now. How we adapt to it is what separates us, right? Well, and as we know, our, our things live forever. So after this pandemic's over and we all hope it's sooner rather than later, but yeah, the things that that we send now will be there six months, a year from now, many years from now in some cases. So, And I think they will be much more appreciated by the people who receive them now. So the impact now, as weird as it sounds, is probably much greater than it would have been six months ago. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great point. So I guess one thing I like to say about my packaging is it truly is timeless. So as we discussed in episode one, I'm not doing anything digital. So things that, that should, social media, TV commercials, you know, that's not me. But if it's something you hold in your hand, that's something that not only does it live forever, but it, it never really ages. Maybe even the technology that's utilized in my packaging may age a bit, but it's, it just lives forever. So one kit that I was thinking about that would be fun to talk about was for jerseys, sweatshirts. So a number of years ago, jerseys came out with a stain-resistant fabric that their sweatshirts would not, you know, they wouldn't stain. You could spill wine on these sweatshirts and it would not, the, literally the liquid just runs right off of the material. It does not soak in. Shut up. No, man, it's, it's, it's it, not only is it true, but what was fun, the challenge, I always like to talk about the challenges, which typically come to me from ad agencies and graphic designers. So they came to me and they said, listen, Jerseys has this new sweatshirt material, and they want to introduce it to Walmart. And at the time, I don't know how many Walmarts there are now. At the time, there were like 4,000 Walmarts across the United States. Like, we need 4,000 kits, 4,000 things to send out to the Walmarts that basically prove that this sweatshirt material does not absorb liquid, does not stain. What would you do? We need some kind of a kit that is a demonstration kit that literally someone can demonstrate in front of others that this stuff actually works. So we came out with this box that, um, that that had foam inside of it, and we took the big rolls of sweatshirt material. So before the sweatshirts are made into what looks like a sweatshirt or a hoodie, they come on these large rolls of material, like you'd see when you're buying fabric. We took these large rolls of red sweatshirt material. The brand name was Spot Shield. So we die cut it in the shape of a shield and mounted it to foam. So you've got the red sweatshirt material die cut in the shape of a shield, mounted to foam. The foam goes into my little box. And next to that little shield is a vial or a medicine dropper full of red wine. And then underneath that is a, is a liftoff lid that reveals a bunch of blazer buttons. So this, this box would arrive, did arrive to Walmart. You open it up inside, you see the little spot shield fabric piece. And literally you pull out the little medicine dropper, you drop on a couple little drops of the red wine. It runs down the little shield, disappears into the foam in the kit. And then the concept, the thought was you then lift off the little lid. Everybody gets a blazer button. The Walmart associates put it on. They start marketing the uh, the new sweatshirts and everybody's happy. Wow. That's that's crazy. For as messy as my kids are, why don't I have those? Why don't I have those uh, jersey and sweatshirts for my kids? Because they're, they're <laughs> slobs. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So those are kind of, I do a lot of those product demonstration kits. And it's, it's, uh, it's always fun fun to try to you start with a challenge and then how do I make that actually happen so as we talked about in episode one that's that's what I do is accomplish or you know solve people's problems and marketing problems how do you show somebody quickly concisely and in a way that really proves proves the point that's really really impactful like you can tell me that it doesn't stain all day long but if you can show me that it doesn't stain that's a different story Agreed. So I did another kit. Uh, again, this one goes back a few years, but timeless. One of, you know, St. Louis is big in ag, ag business, agriculture, and the soybean associations uh, that, that market their various soy products to farmers have been huge customers of mine. And I've done probably 200 different kits over the years that in some way or another talk about the benefits of soybeans, growing 
African soybeans, how to use soy used in various products, whether it's soybeans, soy biodiesel. There's just a soybeans can be used to literally make anything. Right. So one of these kits had, I think it was seven or eight different different stages of manufacture of soybeans. So you either have the whole soybean or it's ground into partially to soybean chunks. And at some point it gets all the way finely refined into like dust, almost looks like flour. So we wanted a kit to display these various soybean particles, if you will. And again, it had to be little, it had to sit on a desk, it needed to open up and it needed to show in one compelling visual what these soybeans look like. And the challenge was, how do you do that? So our solution was to to take these soy products and put them into test tubes, clear test tubes with a screw-on lid, and then stack them all on top of each other and mount them into a box with a see-through uh, see-through window, if you will. So when you open up this box, you instantly, in, in one visual, see all these various soy products. Neat, neat little piece. Just one of my favorite things that I've ever done. And it had a, a hidden compartment that if you open the top, you kind of slide out all of those test tubes and they're all racked into a convenient little carrying case, if you will. That's crazy. I love the way you go about showing it. You know, it's, it's really taking that box out of the box. You know? <laughs> yeah, I like that, man. <laughs> it's it's really cool. I mean, because you know, you get something like that in, in the mail, or you or somebody shows up with that. It's almost like you know you're creating magic tricks. You know I mean, but it's something. It's something that you know will definitely get your attention. I mean, somebody's going to sit there, like you know, and they're going to tell somebody else, going, "Hey, hey, look at this over here. Check this out. This is really, really cool." From then on, then you, it, it helps with the, the word of mouth marketing as well. Right. No, I love the way you said that. The magic of everyone wants to know how these things work. And what's fun is you can deconstruct, in, in many cases, deconstruct my packaging. So, like, how do they get all those little, well, you can see, I can see these soybeans and these clear vials, but how does it work? So, then they're, they're pulling out flaps and sliding things out. And, yeah, it, it really creates... A, a, maybe a topic that isn't the most uh, stimulating, like soybeans. How do you make soybeans fun? But it turns it into kind of a game or a, an activity. That's probably the best way. That's kind of an activity, you know? Gaining anybody's attention these days, especially in, in the time of, you know, social media and the short attention span and things like that, uh, is amazing. If you can get somebody to stop and even pay you five minutes of attention, that does wonders for your customers right there. You know? I love it. And in the time of social media, they send out something like that. You know that somebody gets something cool like that in the mail or they see a cool demonstration. What are they going to do? They're going to retweet that. They're going to put that up on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, wherever it might be. And it goes from there, much like what happened with, you know, your stuff for the NBA. You know, those uh, those NBA players love that stuff so much that they started retweeting pictures of your product. Right. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate success for me. And sometimes, so you talk about social media and a lot of these things that, that I've talked about actually happened before the time of social media, if you can believe that. But I did an interesting direct mail box for a bank, uh, a local bank here in St. Louis that basically was just trying to drive people to show up to the new branch opening. A new branch opened and they had, I don't know, maybe 5,000 people there trying to target. And how do you get Brendan and Jeff to show up to the new bank lobby? Again, a, a business that model that everybody needs, but maybe you're not that excited. What gets Jeff out of his house and, and shows up to the bank? So their, their concept and their thought was they wanted to be your bank for life. So what? how do we how do we pitch that? And so we came up with the idea of let's pitch almost like you're getting married. We want to be, be wed to you. We want you to think of us as, as a partner. We're a partner for life. And so we came up with a, a, a wedding ring. Oh, I can't speak a wedding ring theme. So a box that, that was beautifully printed that looked like a wedding invitation. It had a guy in a tuxedo and it had beautiful floral arrangements and flowers and things that felt wedding like. And when you, and I think on the outside, it said, will you be our customer? And when you open the lid of this box inside was a beautiful velour, a real ring box, just like you'd give the, the ring uh, to someone in this box. And you open the velour box on the inside lid of this velour box was foil stamped with the logo of the bank and a, a beautiful fake 
wedding ring inside and in the inside little this box says something like will you be our customer again and just the whole concept of we want to be your partner for life and the the reaction to this kit was just extreme they they literally could not receive as many customers as showed up to the bank lobby the day that this that this uh, branch opened was crazy and the bank was so excited by it, we then repeated it. Every time they opened up a new branch, we would repeat because it was a different geographic area, of course, for each time that they'd open a new branch. So we just kind of repeated this kit time after time after time. And it, it was really a neat piece. That's awesome. That's that's another great one. Again, it's, you know, getting someone's attention and and doing something like that is amazing. How many? So could you actually take the ring out and put it on too? Yeah, you could. Wow. Yeah, and what's fun for me about these these projects, fun and sometimes frustrating too, is all right. How do I find these little rings that look authentic but don't cost a fortune? So you know, if someone's got a few dollars to spend, I want them spending their money on the packaging, not the the gimmick or the goodie. Sometimes it goes inside. But I think I went to some souvenir company that you know provides gift shops with their trinkets and trash, and the rings wound up looking really cute and attractive, but they were not a lot of money. But those are the kinds of parts of these projects sometimes that that uh, make my days interesting you know some guy tried to give that to a girl yeah you are kidding man <laughs> <laughs> you know some guy's like i got you a ring baby i love you <laughs> yeah in the relationship right there <laughs> well and they put five dollars in a bank account for you <laughs> yeah they have really oh my gosh that's great that's cool i i mean i i truly love the creativity of what you do with your packaging and you know like those kits are just so neat and it's stuff that grabs people's attention and and like you said it lives forever it lives right. forever and, and people keep that around because it's like you know it, it's not something you can buy in a store you know that's a good point yeah so oftentimes these kits they're trying to inspire action and they they do but yeah that it's kind of leaves a souvenir behind of something that to, to remember it by and yeah no one they just feel so nice and they're they're crafted so beautifully and all made in the united states by the way nobody wants to throw these things away so that and then your message much like a promotional product just gives you more bang for your buck every time somebody looks at the logo of the company of the box or the binder or the folder or the ring box whatever it is and it just it speaks forever and one of my one thing i was talking to a customer the other day about his particular project. And I said, you know what, really, when you know it's succeeded is when you walk into somebody's office and you see something that you've sent them years ago still on their desk in use. Or in my case, I said, yeah, and what's even better than that is if I can get something of mine into someone's personal life. So it's a toy that they're playing with with their child at home, or it's a it's a tumbler that they fill with coffee in the morning and then it goes in their car and it goes to their desk and it goes back in their car and it goes back home and it goes in the dishwasher and they're looking at my logo a hundred times a day. That's when I really know that one of my projects has succeeded. That's what I was going to say is, you know, like I've got things like, you know, one of those uh, little golf ball games, it's in the globe that, you know, you, you try to get it up on the tee. Well, I see that logo every time, you know, it's sitting up, it's sitting on a shelf in my office and I see that logo every time I look over, but it's still there. And I've had that thing for probably 15 plus years. It's more than just a pen. You know, everybody has a pen that, you know, there's, here's a, a drawer full of pens. Like, oh, here's one from State Farm Insurance. There's Tom Wooten. There's this guy. There's that guy, you know. Oh, Jerry Kelly heating and cooling, blah, blah, blah. So you've got a million of these pens, but. You know, something like that just sticks around forever. Like, you know, you know, we talked about like the, the mini baseball bats or something like that. That's something that looks like a piece of memorabilia and, right. you know, it's, and it looks cool in their office. Like, wow, I love this ship in a bottle. You know, this ship in a bottle look cool on my, it look cool on my desk. Yeah. I know that it says Sneller Creative Promotions on the bottom, but that ship in a bottle sure looks pretty darn cool. I love that. Yeah, stuff. well, you talked about baseball bats. I did a when the Cardinals won the World Series a few years ago. Uh, another customer of mine wanted to send collectors baseballs that were stamped with that they were real, authentic, you know, been used in the World Series or authentic World Series baseballs. 
And the baseballs themselves came in a in a nice clear acrylic case. But by then, by and of themselves, while attractive, that didn't really do anything for my customer, and it certainly didn't get their logo on the baseball. So their challenge to me was, how can we dress this up and create something like you just said, Brendan, that would sit on their desk or on their shelf and and scream Sneller Creative for the next you know forever? Nobody throws away a collector's uh, World Series baseball, right? So. My idea was to put these in a wooden base, like a home plate base, um, that was engraved with their company logo on it. And so the base was was hollowed out in the center to hold the clear acrylic baseball container. And when mounted in that wooden plaque, it, it was just gorgeous. It made the – because the baseball, while cool – by itself, it's just kind of like a round white object sitting there, but in this beautifully stained wooden base, again, with their logo engraved, was it looked like a trophy. It was gorgeous, just gorgeous. So not only did we create the, the wooden plaque and I bought the baseballs, but then, like we talked again in episode one, I did the mailing for the customer. So we put them in a pretty shipping box. In this case, we used red crinkle cut, that shredded paper, red for the St. Louis Cardinals, filled the box with the crinkle cut, and then drop shipped it again to their customer base of a couple hundred people. So imagine getting that thing, you know, especially now, if you got something like that in, in mail, that would really create an impact. That's awesome. And, you know, and that's another thing that really kind of sets you apart. Yeah, you can go onto your website and look up stuff and say, yeah, I'd kind of like something like that. Um, but it's it's not just hit the button put my logo on this, there's that, you know, you, you're like, okay, so you're thinking about doing this. Well, how about if we take this and take it to the next level of how we can best use this idea for your company? So really the stuff on your, on your website are things that you've done in the past and idea starters, but because, you know, you're a person in not a computer, not a phone room that's just taking orders, you're going through and helping them create something amazing. I love the way you said it, man. That's that's what I have to offer. So yeah, anybody can go online and design their own t-shirt or their own pen. And I'm happy to do that for them too. But the real value is what Jeff can bring to the table. As we mentioned, I'm a marketing guy. I've spent the last 30 years doing this. I think I know a little bit about it. I have amazing resources and I have tireless work ethic and ideas and it may require a little dialogue. And sometimes people don't want that. They literally want to push a button and be done. And, and But as we also know, you get what you pay for. Then they're getting the junky pen with a logo that's smeared and doesn't the pen breaks after five minutes. But, you know, Sneller's not doing pens. We're doing these really cool things that may take a little dialogue and a little interaction. But if people have the, uh, the patience and even the vision and I can help guide them, then we create together, like Tom said in the last episode, together we create something that's 10 times better than either one of us could have come up with by ourselves. Oh, absolutely. And, and like I said before, impactful, it's, it's impactful and something that you remember, you know, that those guys remember those soybean kits, you know, those guys remember that, you know, the, the stainless uh, sweatshirt stuff, you, you know, that these people remember that stuff. It's impactful. It's something that, you know, it, it sticks with you. And how many people, like you said, do have that, you know, ship in the bottle still on their desk or whatever. That's right. awesome. It's, 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 it's awesome. Like every time, uh, every time we talk, I love just hearing the stories of how you come up and, and just created these really, really cool different projects for these people that, you know, you know, that's the difference. It's custom. It's not just that big warehouse of, okay, well we can ship these out tomorrow and uh, they'll be there. But you know, it's a t-shirt that shrinks the first time somebody washes right. it. So it's, you know, you're not getting, you're not getting something that, you know, is just throwaway. Yours is definitely the stuff that people keep, you know, it's, it's the stuff that people hang on to. And I love that. And I love the way that you go about the whole process of making something for your clients. It's, it's great. It's, it's definitely, you know, they're getting what they pay for, for sure. What is really fun for me is it, it always starts off so nebulous and so undefined. A customer comes to me and says, you know, we're Red Robin wants to increase their, their sales. How do we make Red Robin a more interesting or exciting restaurant for people to show up to? And as such, then, you know, not only more people show up, but they're buying more items. But in order to do that, we need to motivate our employees. How do we get them fired up about whatever our latest 
ideas are. That's the kind of things like, okay, how do you attack that? That's what I'm good at is trying to figure out those things. So, you know, I bring this up for a reason. So Red Robin a number of years ago came to me and said, just that. How do we basically create a more exciting restaurant experience? And I said, well, you know, it really starts out with the manager. So your managerial staff has to train all the employees. Uh, we need to create a quarterly kit or a quarterly program to get the the manager fired up first, who then can train everybody to make the Red Robin experience better. So when this idea came up, Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible movies were big in the theater. So we said, why don't we come up with a Mission Possible instead of Mission Impossible, which now it doesn't sound like that amazing of an idea, but going back a number of years, Mission Possible, that was kind of cool. Sure. And, and like we talked about again in episode one with kits, boxes that gain that grab somebody's attention. So then we were talking about the, the zoo vitamin box. Now we're talking about a box that would look like something top secret. That was the whole idea, Mission Impossible. So we created these metal or aluminum boxes, like briefcases, if you will, that were, again, fully whacked out, logoed with the Red Robin logo. And inside each one of these kits, there was one per quarter, you know, for a whole year. So four different kits inside had something different, a different call to action. So one time it was a cell phone. And again, this is when cell phones, you know, everyone has a cell phone now, but the cell phones are kind of a big deal then. So not only did the manager get the cell phone, but you turn it on, it would dial in to a pre-recorded message or basically a commercial launching the program and getting everybody excited. And he would put it on speaker, he or she would put it on speakerphone and let all of his employees listen to it. So the mission, and then there were blazer buttons inside and there were DVDs that you could stick in a DVD player. There are all these little kind of gimmicky uh, tech chashkis that reinforce the mission possible, um, mission possible program. So that, and that's really cool. If I can get a customer that will let me do a quarterly thing, uh, that has the vision for that, then you can really, uh, really see a big impact that way. I bet you they would look forward to that too. And you know, you know that there are some red Robin managers that still have that stuff in their house today. You oh, know Absolutely. There. Me too. I can't get rid of them. And they're metal. They're, they're, we talk about clunky mail. That's the clunkiest, but not just clunky, but kind of sexy and tech and cool. I did another metal box. We talked about celebrities last time, but for the Emmy Awards, literally was giving away a swag bag or a swag box to the celebrities. And this was a gift from Buick. And again, we're going back a few years here, but they're giving away portable DVD players, which at the time were, were the rage and really expensive. But how does Buick give give away something like that? They're not just handing them to handing that item to the celebrities in the retail packaging. That would be way too boring. So I said, Well, I don't, you know, Buick, I'm thinking of strong metal, steel, aluminum, you know, what are cars made out of? You know, something substantial. So we made this beautiful aluminum gift box that was laser engraved with the Buick logo on the lid. Again, another liftoff lid. You open it up inside, and all of the DVD player and components were mounted in this black velour foam. So it wasn't just foam, but it was flocked with a soft black velour on top, almost like those old 70s, 1970s uh, sweat sweatpants and shirts and things, that pe laser suits that people would wear. But this thing was so exotic and and also as we discussed last time my packaging oftentimes is more expensive than the item inside but the red this was before social media but the celebrities were blown away by this item from buick so really really cool piece i could sit here and talk about all these uh these boxes all day long if people want to see see the type of things that you do you've got videos up on youtube you've got uh, your website your website is what stellarcreative.com snellercreative.com and uh, if you're looking for even things uh, do something nice for your employees if you're out there uh, send them some you know like we said hand sanitizer and face masks right now I'll tell you what they would appreciate that more than anything they would well Jeff it's been a pleasure and we will talk again soon thanks to everybody for tuning in to create something amazing a Sneller Creative Podcast this has been create something amazing a Sneller Creative Podcast. Make your business memorable. Go to SnellerCreative.com. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more episodes to find out what Sneller Creative can do for you. Create something amazing, the podcast produced by the podcast.